Good morning, distinguished colleagues and guests. I'm Matthew Jennings, and alongside my co-host Julia Green, we're honoured to welcome you to this once-in-a-millennium conversation about the future of science and the age of artificial intelligence. Indeed, Matthew. Today, we're speaking to an audience of medical physicists and biomedical engineers, people who spend their days navigating the quantum tightrope between physics and patient care. So, naturally, we've arranged a casual fireside chat with a few ghosts of science past. Nothing too complicated, just a little quantum temporal anomaly. We promise to get them back before anyone notices. Today, we have the unimaginable privilege of speaking with three legends. Madame Marie Curie, whose pioneering work in radioactivity quite literally lit up the room. And the ever-inventive, ever-electric Nikola Tesla, who's still powered by alternating current and sheer charisma. And Dr. Albert Einstein, the man who bent space and time. Danke schön. I must say, time travel is oddly smooth when you accept that time is relative. <laughs> Still, it feels like I've been dragged into one of Schrödinger's cat boxes, only with worse coffee. Ah, but what a beautiful future this is. <laughs> I dreamed of wireless power and planetary resonators. But talking AI, machines and robotic radiation beams, even I didn't see that coming. Although, I may have mentioned something like it in my 1908 notebook, right between teleportation and my shopping list. <laughs> the tools have changed, yes, but the essence of science remains the same. Curiosity, patience and the courage to follow strange data down dark corridors. And in my case, sometimes glowing corridors. Well said. Let's begin with the elephant in the server room, artificial intelligence. Professor Einstein, you once said, Computers are fast, accurate, and stupid. Humans are slow, inaccurate, and brilliant. Do you think that still holds true? Yeah, but now it's more complicated. These machines, they compute with elegance. But is that the same as creativity? When I imagined special relativity, it wasn't born of data. It was born of chasing a beam of light in my mind as a child. But Albert, imagination is precisely what machines are beginning to simulate. I've seen these AI models generate music, invent circuits, even write love letters. Though, admittedly, their French is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps they are like new graduate students, enthusiastic and predictable and in need of supervision. But tell me, can they tell when an anomaly is a mistake or a discovery? Many of my breakthroughs came from results no machine would have trusted. That's a powerful point, Madame Curie. In modern radiation oncology, AI is now contouring organs and suggesting treatment plans. And yet the human still remains in the loop. For now. I hope always. When I held radium in my hands, I could feel its presence. There is an intimacy to experimentation that cannot be delegated to silicon. But mustn't we evolve? I design machines to amplify human capability. <laughs> AI is simply the next stage, a synthetic collaborator. Why fear the future when we can wire it ourselves? Because, Nicola, machines may excel at logic, but not wisdom. Technical precision is not moral clarity. Remember, E equals MC squared gave us energy and the bomb. We must guide these tools with care, like toddlers with calculators, useful but dangerous. <sighs> Wise words. Madame Curie, can I ask, in an AI-enhanced lab, who do you think is responsible when things go wrong? The programmer? The physicist? The patient who signs the consent form? Responsibility must remain human. A tool is only as ethical as its wielder. Even radium, which cured so many, burned my skin. Radiation heals or harms. Electricity enlightens or electrocutes. AI liberates or manipulates. The scientist's task is stewardship. 
we must teach not only the science, but the conscience. And yet, ethics evolve too. <laughs> I was once dismissed as a madman for suggesting we could wirelessly transmit energy. But now, your smartphones feast on invisible waves. The future always begins as a heresy. Today's heresy is tomorrow's Nobel Prize. Or meme, depending on the Internet's mood. Tesla's point raises another question. Can AI help us explore ideas once thought too vast? Like unifying quantum mechanics and gravity? I've spent decades trying, Julia. These mathematical jungles, they are deep. <sighs> but perhaps a machine can map them faster than I ever could. Still, we must not confuse complexity for truth. Yet uncertainty remains. Measurement collapses wave functions. Calibration collapses budgets. Complexity is beautiful. Let the machines find patterns we cannot see. Let them show us where the lightning hides inside the numbers. But the results must be testable. In my day, we use electroscopes. Today, we use PET scanners. But no theory is complete until it leaves the blackboard and meets the patient. That's an excellent point. AI is already being used for treatment optimization, image segmentation, and even predicting outcomes. Do you think that practitioners will become merely supervisors of these algorithms? Supervisors or custodians? Without deep understanding, practitioners risk becoming dependent on systems they do not grasp. You must always ask, why does this work? Not just, how does it work? Yes, but understanding is a moving target. When I envisioned the world lit by alternating current, Few understood the physics, but they trusted the light. The same will happen with AI. Mystery first, mastery later. Let us not skip the mastery. AI may speed discovery, but we must train our young scientists not to worship results. Rigor is the backbone of science. How then do we educate the next generation of scientists? How do we teach them to work with AI without losing their scientific intuition? Teach them wonder first. <laughs> Let them play with pendulums, not just code. Understanding gravity with your body is better than memorizing Newton's law. Though fewer apples to the head might have been helpful. And teach them to tinker. Give them tools, wires, magnets. Let them break things and fix them. Curiosity is a better teacher than curriculum. Give AI the drudgery so human minds may wander into meadows of wonder. Wow, I don't know who wrote this script, but that was beautiful. And teach them patience. Real science is slow, it glows faintly before it shines brightly. AI may speed discovery, but it cannot replace perseverance. Also remind them not to glow too brightly. That was my rookie mistake. <laughs> Beautifully said. Before we close, I'd like to ask each of you, what excites you most about the future of science? Fusion reactors powered by starlight. Consciousness uploaded to crystalline cores. Cities lit by moonbeams. I am thrilled by the coming age of resonance between human and machine. For me, it is the chance to finally reconcile quantum mechanics with relativity. To see the universe not as chaos and uncertainty, but as a dance governed by deeper unseen harmonies. I dream of personalized medicine. Radiation tailored to the individual genome, cures born not of chance but precision. And I dream of justice. <sighs> that these miracles reach every corner of the world, not just the privileged few. And finally, what advice would you offer the medical physicists and biomedical engineers in the room today? Let no algorithm replace your humanity. Stay close to your patients, your mentors, your doubts. Dream wildly, even if the world calls you mad.
especially then. Remain curious, seek beauty, and never forget the most beautiful thing we can experience is the mysterious. It is the source of all true art and all science. Thank you, Professor Einstein, Madame Curie, and Mr. Tesla. You've reminded us that while machines may illuminate our path, it's human curiosity that chooses the direction. As we step into tomorrow's lab, let's carry forward not just the tools, but the spirit of discovery. Thank you, Thank and welcome to the Congress. Do you think AI will ever invent better conference coffee? Only if someone gives it fresher beans. <laughs> Innovation thrives on quality inputs. I'll irradiate the beans to keep them fresh. You know, you guys aren't on mute, right?